Sometimes we all need to get away, to escape from the rigors of day-to-day -day life. Of course, if movies and television are to be believed, there will soon come a day where you will literally need to get away, to escape from the hordes of flesh-eating undead roaming the streets and countryside. In case of a zombie apocalypse, you want to make careful note of the following 10 locations. Doing so might just save your life. If you can make your way to the southern coast of Iceland, you'll find a cozy spot that the undead will have a pretty tough time getting to, unless they learn how to sail. A group of tiny islands are scattered here, and one of them, with sheer cliffs virtually all around, hosts a house which has been the subject of all kinds of legends. For one, it was rumored that the house was a gift from the Icelandic government to pop singer Björk, hence its informal title Björk House. Some say that it was actually built for the purpose of avoiding zombies, or that it's the home to a reclusive billionaire. But none of the legends are true. The house was originally a hunting cabin built in the 50s for outdoorsmen who wanted to bag some of the puffins that are native to the area. With plenty of fish to have and a constant supply of fresh water in the form of snow, you can wait out the zombie apocalypse here for a good long time. If you're stuck on the west coast of the US and nobody else thinks of it first, you might be able to ride out the wrath of the zombie horde in Art Deco style in the Chemosphere. Once called the most modern home in the world, the Chemosphere is an octagon-shaped 2,200-square-foot home perched three stories above the ground atop a five-foot-wide concrete pillar. It can only be reached by using a special rail-based elevator, which the undead are unlikely to be able to operate. Also, you have a 360-degree view out over the city of Los Angeles, meaning it'll be easy to spot trouble coming from miles away. Film buffs may recognize the Chemosphere as the house featured in the 1984 Brian De Palma thriller Body Double, so any survivors you take in are sure to be impressed by that detail. With plenty of room for supplies, easy access to the city, only during daylight hours of course, and a virtually zombie-proof entrance, the Chemosphere is a pretty solid option for stylish safety. If you really want to go whole hog with the luxury accommodations while the apocalypse plays out, you're going to want to make your way to Ravens Ridge in Kansas. There you'll find a luxury condominium complex built by developer Larry Hall. It has several advantages. It's centrally located in the US, it has room for plenty of survivors, and it's built within a nearly impenetrable abandoned nuclear missile silo. Accessible only by elevator, the complex runs an astonishing 15 stories underground. There's room for 75 survivors and ample supplies, and the complex is amenities include a movie theater, a rock climbing wall, a dog park, and a gym. There's also a hydroponic garden and a fish farm for when the food starts to run low. And every room has an HD TV which can either give you regular programming or a live feed of the view from outside. Helpful for when you want to make sure the coast is clear before going scavenging. With all the comforts of the pre-plague era, space at Raven's Ridge is sure to be in high demand, which is why Mr. Hall is hard at work building a second facility in a different abandoned silo. If you're truly worried that the outbreak will happen any day now, you can purchase Chateau Artisan in Florida right now, but it'll set you back a pretty penny. The $11 million mansion has been on the market for some time due to its exorbitant price tag. The 8-bedroom, 10-bath mansion sits on 14 acres of magnificent grounds, with a private lake, royal gardens, and a giant koi pond. It's no less than a modern-day castle, but that's not what makes it so attractive to the survival set. That would be the landlocked moat surrounding the entire property. It's safe to say that nobody's ever seen a zombie swim, and it doesn't seem like it would work out very well if they were to try. There's plenty of space to grow food in the friendly Florida climate, and a whole house generator will make sure that you continue to have power even when the lines inevitably come down. There's even a boathouse for when you need to make trips to the mainland. But again, please, not after dark. For those of you in the UK, you'll want to keep in mind a certain location in the North Kensington neighborhood of London. You should be able to spot it right away. It's the only water tower in the area with siding and windows. Appropriately named Tower House, the six-story converted structure currently has two floors, with plans to add a third, bringing the total floor space up to 5,000 square feet. There's plenty of room to stockpile food and ammunition, and the windows give you an all-around view of the city, which will make sure you have plenty of advance warning of rampaging hordes in the area. At the present time, the living area is reached by firehouse style stairs, but plans are being made to install an elevator, which of course is far preferable from a zombie deterring standpoint. If you'd like to check it out first, Tower House can be rented on Airbnb right now. Just don't tell the owner you're scoping it out for possible forcible takeover when the epidemic hits.
It might be a little hard to reach, but that's also one of the advantages of riding out the plague on Dunbar Rock. If you happen to be in the vicinity of Honduras when the dead begin feasting on the living, you'll want to commandeer the nearest boat and make a beeline for the villa, a lavish six-bedroom estate completely surrounded by water. It's also surrounded by tropical reefs, which means there will be plenty of fish to sustain you and your band of survivors. And the tropical climate means plenty of rainfall and opportunities to grow fruits and vegetables. The villa is also available for rent, so if you're lucky, it'll be unoccupied when the global catastrophe strikes. What Camp Georgetown lacks in luxurious appointments, it more than makes up for in security. Fans of the hit show The Walking Dead, and let's face it, if you're watching this video, this means you, will tell you that a prison can be one of the safest places in a world overrun with flesh eaters. Camp Georgetown is empty, secure, and cheap. It was sold to a corporation in 2013 for $241,000, and they still haven't done anything with it yet, so they'd probably be receptive to offers. Aside from the obvious benefit of prison-level security, the facility can bunk over 250 survivors. It also has the requisite prison amenities, gymnasiums, kitchens, medical facilities, a dedicated sewer system, and a 150,000-gallon water tank. There's even pens where poultry can be raised, and its biohazard storage facility might really come in handy if one of your crew happens to get infected. If you can't pony up the cash to buy it before disaster strikes, you'll want to get there fast. With all these resources, competition for the title of Mayor of Camp Georgetown is likely to be fierce. Located in Poland, the structure known as the Safe House looks like a fairly regular, if ultra-modern, home upon first viewing. But the house carries its name for a reason. It was designed for absolute maximum security, and also to be almost totally self-sustaining. First, the large southern entrance has an enormous roll-down gate of anodized aluminum. One of the entryways is also a drawbridge leading up to a terrace on the second floor. But most impressively, the building's concrete exterior walls and shutters can be moved into place to completely seal the house off from the outside world giving it the appearance of a giant solid cube. The house is perfectly insulated in this state, and it also makes use of solar energy and mechanical ventilation with heat recovery. Not only won't the zombies be able to get inside, but when the safe house is all closed up, they won't even know it's a house. This house in Las Vegas looks like any other upon first approach. In fact, the hordes will probably have no problem getting inside. But they won't find anything there, because it's not the house sitting on this plot of land you'll be holed up in. It's the house underneath this house where you'll be camping out, and not even other survivors will know it's there unless you tell them. Unbelievably, there is literally an entire three-bedroom, two-bath house with all of the interior and exterior appointments, including a patio and a pool, buried 26 feet underneath the house above. Built in 1978, as part of a failed business venture. The underground facility was meant to withstand a nuclear blast and has such amenities as a four-hole putting green, a dance floor, bar, and barbecue area. There's even switches that let you simulate the cycles of night and day to keep your crew from getting burned out during extended periods of time underground. Some doomsday bunkers might boast all the comforts of home underground, but only one is the real deal. Prepper Bruce Beach believes that most people are too focused on personal survival in the event of an apocalyptic event, and should be more focused on ensuring the survival of the species. He has put his money where his mouth is, and if you can get to the village of Hornings Mills north of Toronto when the hordes arrive, you can be one of the lucky few to help repopulate the human race. Beach built his shelter called Arc 2 in the 1980s during the height of the Cold War. Impenetrable to anything short of a direct nuclear site, the facility was constructed from the frames of 42 school buses, which were used as a pattern for the pouring of concrete. It sits 14 feet underground and was designed to house up to 500 people for the length of time it would take for the fallout from a nuclear blast to dissipate, which is almost certainly long enough for the zombie epidemic to run its course. Powered by redundant diesel generators, the shelter features two commercial-grade kitchens, a private well, and a septic tank big enough to service a motel. There's even a communications room that can broadcast on the FM band, complete with a weather balloon-mounted antenna that can be deployed from inside the shelter. No detail has been left to chance in this lifeboat for humanity. So if you want to live to tell your grandchildren about the undead plague that almost wiped us out, Arc 2 is probably your best bet. <laughs> 